Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Amanda Breeze and I'm a naturopathic pastoral counselor and I'm here today to talk with you about intuitive plant medicine. I've recently felt the draw back to this conversation specifically uh, as I've been walking my own journey as a naturopath. Uh, so what is a naturopath, if, in case you're not familiar? A naturopath is someone who uses all of the tools of natural health at their disposal in healing. Uh, there's a difference between a traditional naturopath and a naturopathic physician. <clears throat> so a naturopathic physician is someone who went to medical school uh, and whose job is to treat, cure, and prevent illness. Whereas a traditional naturopath, that is not their job. Their, to, their job uh, is to be a supportive person in the world of complementary therapies uh, along the lines of Ayurveda, yoga therapy, holistic health in general in that scope of practice, uh, which is in no way treating, pure, preventing, or curing disease. So that's the difference between the two. Um, I do have a doctor, but it is not in medicine, and so that is not what I am doing. Uh, but I do find what's interesting about the role of the traditional naturopath uh, is that they're really interested in the whole toolbox. And that's what interests me about that, that line. And I have met quite a few naturopaths over the years who, uh, you, they're usually these people who their whole life in mission and calling is natural health. And some of the best of those naturopaths have also been Jesus lovers and people who their faith is at the forefront of their whole lives, and yet they've, they've been spending their whole lives getting flack about these natural practices. And often they're the, the pioneers of energy medicine. And so there's, there's a lot to unpack with that, uh, but I do find it interesting that there is nothing vogue or new or new age necessarily about this. These are the practices that have been around for thousands of years that people are beginning to circle back to, especially with the spiritual seeking movement in the 60s and 70s and bringing uh, also the internet in, into play. So now we have access to all this information we didn't have before. And the naturopath is unique in its ability uh, to avoid a pigeonhole. And that's where I've really struggled uh, is, is feeling pigeonholed as a practitioner. Uh, I love all the tools and the big toolbox of natural health. And I also feel that faith is an important part of that. And my focus, right, because it's important to have one, um, has been in complex trauma. And so my content, uh, my content pillars, so to speak, are Christian adapted complementary therapies for adult survivors of complex and family trauma. What does that mean? Uh, so the Christian adapted piece, right? So understanding that main issue first. So a lot of my content you'll notice is dealing with that intersection. What Christians can or cannot practice, uh, but more importantly, how to adapt it and whether or not it is adaptable. So for example, Reiki, astrology, plant medicine, shamanic work, right? All of these things seem unrelated. But the truth is that they have this shared interest in energy medicine, in spirituality, in the human spirit, in the frontiers of energy medicine. And that is what I've also found interesting on social media. These other practitioners are like, started out as a massage therapist, and I soon found the whole rabbit trail here <laughs> of modalities. And that's why that is. And that's what the naturopath uniquely understands, um, is that this journey is just one journey as opposed to a bunch of unconnected things, disconnected things. So the issue of Christian adapting is the first thing um, that I talk about quite a bit. The second is the issue of uh, Christian adapting complementary therapies. So understanding the power of these therapies, right? Like understanding the use of alternative medicine uh, within mainstream practice and how this is becoming more mainstream. And so now they have a term for that called integrative medicine, where we are using the best of both of these worlds. And that's what the research supports is it's not all about just the complementary therapies, nor is it just about the talk-based therapies, especially in the context of trauma and person-centered betrayal trauma, uh, codependency, dealing with recovery, love addiction, these types of things, right? Like when, when there's a personal element to the trauma, uh, that the gold standard is to use both, right? The top-down, the talk-based traditional approaches, think like talk therapy, psychotherapy, along with the bottom-up approaches that are more somatic, getting into the body, understanding the vagus nerve, uh, the polyvagal theory, and how the nervous system uh, responds best uh, in healing using the combination of both and understanding best practices and how to go about that uh, in a way that has integrity. 
And then the adult survivor, right? So the adult survivor is different than the child who is currently going through childhood trauma, right? That's powerful. Lots of great therapists are specialized in that. That is not what I'm specialized in. I'm specialized in the adult survivor who survived that and how that's showing up again and again in their adult romantic relationships, right? And so they went through this thing when they were younger. Maybe their parent was dealing with substance use issues or mental health issues or uh, whatever the case is. They, maybe they went through something outside of the family system, but they went through something developmentally where the nervous system never knew stability. Like in, in its... Whatever happened in these initial attachment patterns uh, is playing out in adult relationships. And it's not really sometimes until one gets to that point where it's like, oh, yes, I'm interested in overcoming this cycle and being done with this cycle. Uh, because it might look like divorce, multiple breakups, multiple relationships, struggling um, right with codependency, caretaking addicts. And we might look at this person and be like, wow, this is a really smart individual. Why are they struggling with this so much? And this is usually why. And the church is not always equipped to understand the complexities of some of this. And neither is the world equipped sometimes to understand the spiritual components. And faith is this really powerful fuel we can pour on the fire of recovery. Uh, and that's what organizations that use faith at the center of their recovery efforts, that's why they have statistically such better results is because they're including faith. And practices like meditation are uniquely powerful in being able to overcome uh, some, of, some of this that has happened in childhood trauma and getting some of these results in today's world, right? Like we're not just stewing in what happened, but we're trying to move forward without blame, without projection, without being a victim. Um, and at the same time, using all the tools in the tool belt, it's not always easy, right? Like you open an herbalism textbook and boom, there's a section on witchcraft and you're like, no, 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 I'm a Christian. Uh, this is biblically prohibited. This is specifically prohib biblically prohibited in the mandates of Deuteronomy and therefore this is not okay for me, right? And so this might be part of your journey uh, if you're watching this. It's trying to figure out where you fit, where you belong. Uh, maybe you, you could use a hand trying to navigate some of this, navigate this world uh, in understanding the complexities. So I would love to help you out with that. So I have a couple of offerings that I would love to share with you. Uh, the first is when it comes to the world of natural health, I love, love, love plant medicine. What is plant medicine? So it is more than just um, think like ayahuasca ceremonies and peyote and all of these things that, um, you know, have amazing properties and potential breakthroughs for people. Um, I have I have not much to say about that. That's not what I'm referring to, but that's often what people think of when they think of plant medicine. I am referring to the apothecary of the Garden of Eden, of his eco-spirituality, and all of the transpersonal things within that Garden of Eden, so to speak, that is available to us today uh, that I believe God gave us as a uh, common grace available to everyone. I believe that lavender oil is innately healing for all people, um, in most cases, not every case, but because of common grace, right? Like God just made things that are healing innately without them having to be Christian things. And so uh, my content is definitely based on Christian faith and a Christian adaption. Uh, but like many recovery organizations that want to be open to all people and want all people to be feel welcome, I would like you to feel welcome wherever you're at in that path. So maybe you grew up in the faith and you walked away from it and you're like, meh, not so much my things. I have church hurts. And so I don't know quite what I think of you using the word God and Lord and all of these things so much, but I'm open because I'm coming back to my faith, right? Like maybe I'm, uh, I've been in a new age rabbit trail for a long time and I'm recognizing that my faith is not always welcome here. Uh, and I'm interested in getting back to the roots of that in a way that allows me to embrace my spirituality, uh, my Christian spirituality. Uh, so that's really what the hope is here, is that we can find that intersectionality uh, where we can have spiritual practices like homeopathics, like herbalism, uh, using all of these things that are, are uh, considered alternative medicine, while still being in integrity with faith and figuring out what that looks like. And that's where biblical naturopathy comes in. Biblical naturopathy says... Yes, all these practices are amazing. Not all of them are appropriate for Christians or some of them need adaptation. What does that look like? And then also understanding that there's an element of we can use the tools, but ultimately Jesus is the healer. 
So what does that look like, right? Like sometimes Jesus says, you know, get your toxins out of your water. I can, you know, supernaturally heal you of this disease or I can, you know, teach you the root of what's going on to help yourself so that cycle stops persisting. And I feel like that's the dance we dance as Christians is figuring out when God is trying to show us uh, breakthrough and show us a new way of doing things versus when God is just going to step in supernaturally, as is the case in the charismatic and Pentecostal movements, which I am a part of. Um, and I believe that God can work with both. And I believe that God does. So for example, um, I went in a few months ago and had some people pray for me at church and I had great breakthrough and it wasn't instantaneous healing. But what I found was some breakthrough in my supplement routine that has really started to impact my symptoms. And I believe it is directly correlated to prayer and being prayed over and the laying out of hands that happened in church. I don't think these things are disconnected. I think this is absolutely connected. And so that's where as Christian spiritualists, we're finding that sweet spot uh, and we're in biblical naturopathy. We're not getting carried away with supplements, thinking that supplements are going to supernaturally fix us. Uh, but neither are we avoiding the work of really showing up when it is the Lord that is leading us like, hey, maybe there's something to this. Um, and I really believe in the power of, of the natural world. And I believe that God gave us the natural world not to be worshipped, um, as in pagan culture, uh, but that we are, as humankind created in God's image, uh, we were mandated to steward this garden and to steward our responsibility and doing the works that Jesus did and more. So what I am interested in doing with you is a one-on-one -on -one personal session where we can go through and do some testing to figure out what is going on for you in terms of what your body is asking for. And the reason I find this really powerful, uh, it's just a 30-minute 30, 30 one-on-one session, is because we can go through and get a look at what your body is coming up with. Uh, in terms of test results without having to go through a bunch of expensive um, functional med tests first. And what happens is often in the functional med world, what's happening is um, people are getting really hyper-focused on testing, 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 supplements, supplements, supplements. And when I mean supplements, I mean not these super like organically made with the wisdom of nature still intact supplements, but these vitamin C vitamin B12, vit like still an allopathic approach to healing. So in intuitive plant medicine, what we are doing is we are working with the more eco-spiritual side of things. We are working in tandem with, with biblical understanding of the hundreds of times that herbs and essential oils and incense is mentioned in the Bible as something uh, integral uh, to Jewish culture. This wasn't something that was foreign or far out there or new age. Um, and so we're we're coming at this from a more quantum physics approach. So we're looking uh, to establish resonance between your body and the resonance uh, of the tinctures to, or the extracts to come up with what intuitively your body has going on. So it's not just about what you test for in these results, but it's also understanding like, oh, interesting, thyroid keeps coming up or adrenals keep coming up. So then we can do an additional 400 question assessment that takes about another half hour on your own time to complete and that's going to establish your body's main priorities. So whether it is dealing with mold or parasites or mitochondrial dysfunction, we can establish all of that without spending a bunch of money on these functional medicine tests. Now, if we get going down the line and either you're not getting the results that you're interested in getting or it seems like maybe you want further validation, those tests are absolutely available. I've done many of those tests over the years and it is helpful to know what's going on. At the same time, people ask me, well, should we do more testing first? And my thoughts are, well, why don't we give it a try uh, with instead focusing that money? So instead of spending $500 on the Dutch test to establish that your hormones are out of whack, you know, intuitively, you, you know that already. Uh, and the assessment is showing that and your results from your initial tests are showing that in terms of your muscle testing that we've done. So why don't we start with dealing with that and then check in in a month and see how that's going and see if that's getting better and if, if we're moving in a positive direction. And what that does is it, it really starts to decrease the cost uh, involved in being able to access some of this. So I don't know about you, but I mean, I've historically had my own garden, my own 500 square foot, 700 square foot garden, trying to grow some of this stuff, right? Like I really have <laughs> tried to 
figure out like, all right, like it, it can get expensive to buy all these things. And so for example, um, you know, I made my own flower essences this week and that can be super powerful. And if you have time for that, I highly recommend it. But what I found to be the case is that at the end of the day, that is actually not always more financially feasible. Um, and so being able to, for example, use these spagyrically processed herbs where they are essentially supercharged um, and where they have the wisdom of nature still intact, right? So with the pharmaceutical, what we do is we take an herb and we extract the, the concept, right? Like valerian and valium. Uh, but once it gets pulled out of the wisdom of nature, out of the wisdom of its full intelligence, that's where we come up with side effects. Uh, because there's all of this, this synthetic component of it that is missing the wisdom of what nature knew, like, hey, it actually needs to work in synergy with all of this. Um, so that's the power of, of working with a line that's really going to have the impact that you hope. Uh, and so that is what I do. So I'm an energetics practitioner. That's the line that I primarily work with. I also have a couple other lines of flower essences, of essential oils and whatnot uh, to get you started. Um, but I just want to invite you, if you've made it this far on the recording, let's, let's give this a shot. Let's work together. You can take the results, go to your MD and say, hey, what do you think about this? Does this work uh, for what I've got going on and what my body needs? Um, but if you want to learn more, if you want to get started, check out my master class um, and I'll send, I'll put a link in it here in the captions. And on the other side of completing um, after the master class, there's a workshop attached to it afterwards that you can roll in. And once you complete that, there's a free one-on-one -on -one session with me to get started doing this testing. And so I would love to meet you in this journey, to get started on this journey. So go ahead, check that out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me, let me know what questions you have. I love responding uh, to comments, to disagreement, uh, to respectful disagreement. Uh, specifically to the argument, right? Uh, that, that to me is really powerful. And I would love to engage in conversation with you about all of this. So thank you so much for diving into all of this with me this morning. Uh, let me know that you're here and have a great rest of your day.